Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to the Customer Success Webinar Series. I am Scott Slamba, Head of Customer Success here at Comprise. And today we have two guests. We have Benjamin Henry, our field CTO, and we have Trenton Epperson, one of our senior lead support engineers. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about performance. Uh, as a reminder for folks, uh, the target audience of this webinar is for existing customers. So this is not a marketing pitch or a sales pitch. We're just here to come around and tell you about the latest features, uh, best practices, uh, tools of the trade, et cetera. Uh, you know, the whole idea here is to have you make the best use of our product. Uh, before we get going, a couple logistics. Uh, if you haven't figured it out yet on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a full screen mode that will give you a better, ex better viewing experience. And while I'm thinking of it, we had a couple of people report last time that the, the video was a little blurry. So if you're experiencing that, please put that in the chat so we'll know. I'm not sure if it's an isolated incident or, or more across the board. But in any case, uh, if you do have a blurry experience, uh, just note that the recordings are crystal clear. So you can always go back and get a crystal clear recording. Uh, questions. So I've talked about the chat. Uh, there's no audio, but we do encourage you to ask questions. You would do that via the chat and just... To get to get to the chat, you'll get I need to get out of full screen mode to get to the chat. But yeah, please, please ask questions. It really uh, it really helps with the webinar. Uh, gets gets a gets a good groove going here. Um, and you'll see some attachments. We'll talk about them as we go along. Actually, near the end, uh, no polls today, so don't worry about that. We've got the rating, and then down the bottom, uh, question we get from every webinar is, are these things recorded? And the answer is yes. We record all the all the webinars and we put them on this site right here comprise.com slash tech crunch uh, actually i encourage everybody to go to that site regardless because there's tons of great content out there uh so that's a that's a great place to spend some time and, and catch up on past webinars and, and and other we have other things in there beyond the webinars so highly encourage you to go there so the agenda for today uh so we'll, we'll get it we're going to start off with ben talking about uh, best practices topology data pass for performance. Uh, a little bit of a review from what we did last fall. We did a couple of performance. Performance is a really hot topic, and it's a very broad and deep pro, uh, topic. So we did a couple of sessions last fall. Ben's going to do a little bit of a review of what he did last fall to tee up Trenton, who's going to talk about some troubleshooting best practices and strategies. And we have a couple of examples of, of some things you can do. And then, of course, uh, we encourage you to ask questions along the way. Uh, but anything we don't catch, we'll, we'll, we'll try and leave some time at the end. Uh, we can go well over the bottom of the hour so uh, and answer more questions, and we'll, we'll allow time for that. Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ben to talk about topology. Cool. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. So quick background um, for anybody new on the call here is uh, I was actually a, a customer of Comprise for several years prior to joining Comprise. I actually came from Pfizer. I was there for a little oh, over okay. 17 years. Uh, my background is in application development, uh, databases, uh, storage, <laughs> data protection, disaster recovery. Um, in addition to that, I also um, led a team up for mergers and acquisitions um, within, within Pfizer. So I always kind of got involved in the, how are we going to bring this company in or how are we going to stand this up as its own company and move that data around? So data is where I lived for, for several, several years, and I've experienced many different bottlenecks, many different topology issues, and it, it's kind of where I, I, I like to work with customers and help them figure out what can we do to help them move the most amount of data that they can to achieve their goals in, in the shortest amount of time. So um, I'm going to focus in a little bit on migrations today and talk about some scenarios that I, I've, I have seen with customers, and we'll talk through how we help them overcome those, those issues. Um, in migrations, you know, the logical diagram on the left hand side, we have the old NAS on the right hand side, we have the new NAS and it looks simple and it, and it and truly it can be. But when you get to the physical layer of things, you've got the switches, the application servers, the routers, the firewalls, and then everything on the other side. If you're moving between sites or you're going on prem to the cloud, um, there's a lot of things that can get in the way. So let's talk through an actual scenario with a customer that was taking their entire on-prem unstructured data work, workload and moving it to Azure files. So in the process of migrating, uh, the customer had their local application servers, their local NAS, the router, the firewall, they had an IP VPN circuit going to Azure, and then they had their cloud NAS, which was Azure files. 
um, when they contacted us, they said, okay, I've got a one gig circuit. I'm only able to move data at about 10 megabits per second. Okay, well, let's look at the obvious. Let's talk about the firewall. So in with the firewall, do we know if the rules for this data flow are whitelisted? Well, they're not. Okay. So what we did is the customer worked with their security team and they put a whitelist in. And that allowed the data to not go through the staple packet inspection phase of the firewall because it was known traffic. We trust this traffic. So let's create a, a little like, easy pass lane for this, this traffic to go through. Well, we went from 10 megabits to 50 megabits per second. Okay, well, we're nowhere near the capabilities of this line. So there has to be something else in this process. So we leverage something called ACE. It's called Assessment of Customer Environment. It's a tool that was developed by Comprise to help diagnose bottlenecks. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on and how it works, but we used ACE and said, all right, based on the timings, based on the results, something else is still in the way here. And the security team said, okay, well, we're also seeing some, some, some traffic that also agrees with what you're, you're seeing as well. So, all right, full circle, let's bring everyone in. You know, who manages the NAS on the other side? Who manages the circuit on the other side? Well, the customer said, oh, well, wait a second. We have a security team that manages the firewall on our side, and then our cloud operations team actually operates everything after the VPN. When we brought the cloud operations team in, they said, well, wait, we've got two load balancers because we have a 10 gig circuit on the other side, and then we've got four firewalls, each capable of processing 2.5 gigabits. Oh, okay. So now all of those firewalls didn't have the same rules that the security team applied on the on-prem side. So let's go ahead and let's apply some of the same rules. We did that, but there was still tons of, of retries and retransmits on the network. And that's because of the load balancing in the firewalls and we had asymmetric routing. Okay, so let's talk through this. On the left-hand side, security team whitelisted the data, got our traffic moving. On the right-hand side, cloud operations team whitelisted traffic, but we had asymmetric routing. And when you have asymmetric routing, the, the SMB traffic wasn't going through. The packets weren't being received in the order they needed to be. So the SMB is saying, wait, this traffic's not correct. Resend the packet, resend the packet, resend the packet until it gets the order correct. The cloud operations team put in a static NAT route to say, always use this firewall for this traffic. Again, each firewall is capable of, of doing 2.5 gigabits. The line's only one gigabit. So therefore, one firewall can handle all the traffic for this migration. Once we did that, we got up to 100 to 150 megabits per second. Okay, better, but we're nowhere near the maximum capabilities of this line. So let's dig in and let's figure out what else is going on here. Well, with that, the cloud, the uh, security team said, oh wait, we forgot, this is a site where we hadn't replaced the firewall yet. This firewall was the, was the bottleneck that would never let them get above 100 to 150 megabits per second because it's a one gig firewall but the site to site VPN capabilities was only 500 megabits. And that 500 megabits was being used anywhere from 350 to 400 megabits. So in the end, 100 to 150 megabits was as fast as this migration was going to go. All right, so there's some of the scenarios that are one scenario with the customer and how we work through it to get them to move the data as fast as they possibly could, given the, the I, I really, the the bottleneck that they had that they just could not overcome. So next up is Trenton and, and how do we diagnose some of this stuff? How can some of the stuff be self-diagnosed um, and, and help you as the customer, again, move data as efficiently as possible? So Trenton, do you wanna go yeah. ahead and introduce yourself real quick and then we'll, we'll jump into your slides. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ben. So uh, by quick way of introduction, um, again, Trenton Epperson, I have been, um, I'm a senior uh, support engineer here with Comprise, where I've been in the storage industry for about six years, cybersecurity for five years, um, with a networking company for, for seven years. Um, most of that time has been spent with my um, troubleshooting focused on networking, even though we have endpoints, um, any, any admin will know. Um, you, you can't do anything with your server unless you have networking and, and have things coming in and out. Uh, for servers in the storage industry specifically, that means IOPS, that means disks, that means how many input outputs per second can you do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, performance aspect. And Ben, thank you for the 
um, for the scenario that you gave us, um, a real life scenario. For troubleshooting performance, um, it's really about finding the bottleneck. You've got a chokehold, where is that at? And um, performance can be pretty encompassing. It can, it can handle anything from the server on either side for CPU, IOPS, um, memory. It can be the network in between. It could be the hardware of your NICs. Um, so you need a methodology to kind of segment that away and after you've segmented it, you, you start troubleshooting the segments to rule out what section is it at. Um, and so here um, is a comprised specific product. Um, we will have a source data store or filer and um, the observer, the comprised observer is gonna pull data to it and then it's gonna send it to a destination server. So there's kind of three segments in that path. Um, just a rudimentary diagram here. You can see that source filer on the left in the box. You've got the network that leads to a comprised observer and then another network that's going to go to your, your target data store. And so in, in red, I've highlighted, you know, your three segments. And this is what we're going to break it out to to say, all right, is the problem, if there's a performance problem, is it on the left side? Is it there in the middle? Is it on the right side of that diagram? And um, to isolate that problem, you're going to use tools to try to figure out where that's at. And so talking about some of those tools, um, not everyone's gonna be in the position where, where Ben got answers of, you know, someone says, oh yeah, of course we've got this bottleneck here. Um, you have to usually test to find out where that bottleneck's at. So ping, simple, easy start. Um, ping can find uh, network layer issues between devices. Um, you know, if you're in the same data center, you should have results of a few milliseconds or less. Um, some of the possible issues that can uncover, you can have maybe devices in a different physical lo location that you didn't know about. You could have MTU fragmentation issues. You could have packet loss. And so here in blue, if we kind of expand out on this diagram, um, we've got basically we're going to from the source filer to the comprise observer on the network specifically with, with ping. We're not looking at CPU or memory or IOPS. Um, also, we have tools, traceroute and iperf and packet captures that can do those things without looking at what's going on inside the appliances. So you're, you've just got the network there. Um, traceroute um, helps you find, again, network layer issues between the devices. Um, and iperf can also give you bandwidth constraints, um, help you uncover packet loss. And um, so as we kind of move on to different segments of where, where you can troubleshoot, um, eventually you're going to want to get outside the network and inside the observer, or you're going to want to get a little bit wider. Um, and that starts being real complicated because you, you now have to test upper layer protocols like NFS. You need to get full reads and writes and you need to do that, not just you know a megabyte of data, you need to push a lot of data in a fast amount of time. And so to troubleshoot that full stack, um, you're going to have GUI analytics that you might be provided from your filers or from um, a comprise director. Um, comprise has a, a tool called ACE that basically just pushes reads and writes um, in multiple um, multiple threads, multiple streams. Um, ben will briefly hit on that at, at the end. Um, you can also use packet captures to get that full cycle. And so um, as we look in red here, we are with using these tools to go, including the network, but also inside the server and client for that troubleshooting. And then finally, we've got tools that are going to eliminate the network, but just look at the CPU of the server or the client. Um, the number of IOPS might be provided in, in GUI tools, things like that. So there you're, you're kind of moving your, your progression to troubleshooting. Once um, performance starts getting to this level, though, it, it gets pretty complicated where you've, you've usually got multiple parties engaged. You've got 
your server admins or the source and the destination client and server, you've got um, maybe your network team involved at this point and, and you've already run a few tests but you're, you're continuing to zero in on the problem. Um, putting it all together from, from all these slides. So you've just got all these tools, ping, traceroute, iperf, pack captures, the GUI tools, IOPS, um, our ACE tool. And you jumping back to what I said at the beginning, it's a methodology. You need to break it into pieces and then you need the tools that work at the layer that you're trying to isolate to see where the problem is. But I like to say you need to divide the universe yeah. into smaller pieces and then go, yeah, keep boiling it down, iterate and iterate. Um, so let's have a, a quick demonstration just of um, ping iperf trace route. Um, I have here a, um, you should be able to see my screen now, a server um, in, in Canada um, over by uh, Montreal um, near New York on the Canada side. And um, I'm going to just quickly ping to a server that's in Paris, France. And because it's across the ocean, we are going to expect latency in these ping times. So um, five pings, we can see the latency, 84 milliseconds, 84, 84 milliseconds. So that's expected because we know that we're in Paris. Um, but if you were, were thinking that you were in the same data center or geographically close or 50 miles away, there's definitely going to be a problem here with 80 milliseconds of data. Um, a trace route also run to the same location. I've got 19 hops to get there. Um, and between those hops, you can see you know, 0.5 milliseconds, 76 milliseconds, somewhere between hop 8 and hop 10 is where I really jump far away to jump from a half a millisecond to 76 milliseconds. So from there I can start isolating, oh, well, what, um, what is that hop nine and hop 10? What, what are these IP addresses um, going to? Of course, nine it ends up being, because I'm on the open internet, something that doesn't um, respond to trace route, it has that block, but um, iperf ends up by default sending um, as much data as it can between two points in 10 seconds. Um, and then it breaks it down in, in intervals. So you can see, uh, as I run this iperf to this Paris um, server, 118 megabits per second, 283 megabits per second, 220. Um, after 10 seconds, I average that out to um, 169 megabits per second. Um, not bad speeds, but since I'm on a one gig link, I want something closer to a gigabit per second, not 160 megabits per second. The reason for the performance problem here is Canada to Paris, um, Montreal, with 85 milliseconds of latency gives me a drop. If I look at something that's uh, geographically closer, New York, um, I've got a server here. If, and we've got eight second, milliseconds of latency. If I run iperf to that server, you can see I'm now getting close to my full bandwidth, 986 megabits per second. Um, and the reason I'm close to my gigabit per second is because my latency is only um, eight or nine milliseconds. I've got another server that's in Montreal in the same data center. And if I ping that, we've got less than one millisecond of latency. Um, the interesting thing about that server is that if I run iperf, um, the same tool here, I don't have my full gigabit link. So that could be an alarm as you're running these tests. The reason for that on my scenario is even though the source that I'm on, this client here has a one gig link, the destination has a um, 100 megabit per second link. And so that's gonna be the, the cause. Sometimes you might not know that though. And so your iperf pushing data to the maximum bandwidth is going to show you those constraints. Um, as we jump back to the slide over here, 
Um, So real quick, while you're jumping back to that slide, Trenton, so if we go back yep. and we look at the latency you were talking about, so you had just about, let's round up, and we're going to do napkin math here for a second. You're going to say yep. you have a one gigabit line, and we're going to round up and say you've got 100 milliseconds of latency. You've essentially taken that one gigabit line and reduced it or divided it by 10. So each connection is at maximum going to achieve around 100 megabits max so so you take a one gig line the max you're going to be able to transmit data is at 100 megabits and really nothing is going to overcome that because of the physical distance and the latency on that line correct um yeah there are some additional things you can do like having a multiple simultaneous streams going at the same time which now so. you can if you can get 10 streams going then you can use potentially use the, the full capability of that line correct yep. right because the um the the wasted the wasted space or um, the, the reason you're getting less throughput is because you've, you've got a lot of time spent waiting for acknowledgements to come back to say, yes, I've received the data. And so the, the latency is eating up um, because you've, you've sent as much as you can in the TCP window that you have until you wait for a response to come back to say, okay, now you can send me more data. And that's not a function of the SMB or NFS protocols. That's a function of the TCP IP stack, correct? Right. Yeah. So UDP doesn't work with acknowledgments, although acknowledgments may still be built into an upper layer protocol that runs off of UDP. But um, for storage, NFS, SMB, they don't run off of UDP. They run off of TCP. And so you will be at the mercy of the TCP window with acknowledgments, which is a good thing because it confirms that the data was received. But that's um, a, that's that latency a, is going to kill you. That's another good point to call out. The, the, the most basic differences between UDP and TCP is you called it out. UDP doesn't do the error checking. It's like a megaphone. You can speak into the megaphone. It doesn't necessarily mean someone's talking to you. Where TCP is, a, is someone speaking and then an acknowledgement of, yes, I received it, send the next, correct? Correct. And um, in all of your... Uh, again, SMB, NFS, your your protocols for sending data across the internet or HTTP, they all run off of TCP, not UDP. So you will have that um, assurance that the packet made it and was received, but also you have the, the TCP window that that high latency is going to mean that you're waiting to send more data. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, uh, Scott here. I want to interject for a second. I just got word that uh, a number of additional people had started attending the call after we started. I just want to remind those folks to let them know that uh, you know, we encourage you to be interactive, ask questions. So if you get out of full screen mode, you'll see a chat box on the right hand side of your screen. Please jump in and uh, ask away. Uh, and if there's any additional content that you're looking for in the future, you know, if that comes to mind, just throw that out there. And Trent, I'll, I'll, I'll actually I'll start off. I actually have a question. Yeah, you've, you've been you've been at Comprise for a couple of years now, and you've you've seen a bazillion uh, performance issues. What what are the most common things you run into in your day to day um, job? You know, as you as you isolate the network, um, there's a lot of different places where things can go wrong, as I said before. But most commonly, it's going to either be network bottlenecks, such as you're trying to go. Um, you know, a thousand miles of transferring the data or your IOPS, how much can your filer support? We're not the only user on that. You've got other kinds of users. You've got backups that are going on. Um, and so you, you may just be at the mercy of you've got too much going on for, for that filer to be able to pull and read the data off of it. Okay. And I know today's webinar focused more on the networking side of it. Um, and, you know, we're, we're close to the bottom of the hour here, so we don't have time to go into deep, deep details. But or just real quick, are there any any tools out there, any easy way to figure out if you may have a, an IOPS overload or bottleneck? You know, it, um, it gets complicated in that respect because um, you – you may want to first do what I've done, like like iPerf. If, if I can see that I can push nearly a, a gigabit of data through my my gigabit pipe, and I'm still getting 
um, performance that's in the megabit range or 100 megabits per second, then I'm going to start looking at probably the, the GUI of your filer of Comprise um, to start looking at what it's what it's showing. But even those, they don't do a good job of calling out, oh, look, you've, you've exceeded your max. So um, you're going to end up, uh, you're going to still end up needing to, to run uh, tools that are, are going to read and write data like iPerf did, pushing as much as it can and maybe doing multiple streams. Um, Comprise has developed um, just using regular Python. Um, it's not proprietary in any way. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I don't think that it's proprietary, but uh, it's just using Python code to push data um, at the NFS or SMB or S3 bucket level. Um, ben, do you want to take a moment and just talk about that? Yeah, certainly. I'll talk about ACE. And before I do, real quick, Scott, and any additional questions in the, in the queue here before I jump into ACE? Nothing's, yeah. nothing's in the queue. We have a quiet crowd today, but that's okay. okay. Awesome. So ACE, assessment of customer, customer environment. What can we do with this? So what we're going to do is we're going to test source and target. It can be NAS to NAS, NAS to object, object to NAS. We, we can test the, the throughput of source read and write, target read and write. We're going to check how long it takes to do MD5 checksums, attribute copies. Based on the results uh, of those round trips, we're going to help the customer kind of key in on where some of those bottlenecks may exist. Does it look like a firewall? Does it look like antivirus? Does it look like an asymmetric route? Kind of what I talked about earlier with another customer. Um, are we seeing high latency? Those are the things that we're going to help you diagnose and, and hopefully point you in the right direction to help resolve where those bottlenecks may, may exist. Uh, feel free to contact your account team, whether it be the AM or the SE or your, your CSM uh, or even support. Any of us can run this. We can collect the results and we'll gladly let you know what we can find, what we see. All right, Scott, back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, that brings us near at the end here. Uh, you know, well, well, again, please ask questions if you have them. Uh, also, love to get feedback on additional topics. Uh, you know, the the universe of of performance issues is pretty broad and can go pretty deep on how you go about debugging them. So, you know, we, we just scratched the surface on that. A few low hanging fruit tools. Uh, if you want to go deeper, just let us know. Uh, or any other topic with Comprise. You know, that, that's why we're here. We're just here to help you make best use of the product. Um, and then also, if anybody has, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had a few people reporting on blurry screens. Uh, actually, somebody reported that they've seen it, but it's the same person as last time. <laughs> so if anybody's seeing blurry screens, uh, please let us know so we know it's not an isolated incident. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, the the recordings are all, all, are all uh, crystal clear. We did get a question. Is ACE available to current comprised customers or is it additional cost? I can't answer that one. No, uh, it's, it's, it's free to use. Um, a, a little bit of background, it's been kind of, it, it's, it started off as kind of a grassroots uh, project that uh, actually Ben drove the lead here of, of pulling it together because as a matter of survival, you know, it was just a tool that was really helping us understand where some of those bottlenecks could be. Um, in, in the you know long term, we're looking to actually integrate into the product, so it's more of a push button tool. But right now, it's it's more of a script that needs to be executed. So, it, there's there's no additional cost. It's there, uh, and I always say ace early, ace often. You know, it, it's it's let's rule out any any things that might be slowing you down from the get go. So as as Ben said, just reach out to your CSM, SE, whoever. Uh, they can all run it, and it just takes about a 30, 40 minute working session to to you know get get uh, get get the results. Okay. Excellent. Uh, and yeah, please continue asking questions. Uh, actually, I can't read this slide. <laughs> I'm on a small screen. I think there's. Uh, actually, I'm not, I'm not, I can't. Even, I can barely read what's on the left hand side here. But anyhow, the recordings uh, again, comprise.com/slash/techcrunch. That's where all the recordings reside. Uh, and then, yeah, beyond the chat here, if you think of something after the fact, uh, again, you know, customer success at comprise.com, send a request there if you, if you have additional topics you want to hear about and or uh, run ACE or anything else for that matter. Oh, great. We got a couple more questions coming in. Um, what do we have here? 
Blur, oh, yeah, yeah, blurry image yeah, it, is, yeah. it is available to comprise customers. Um, it, it is an engagement that is free of charge. So the question was no additional cost and, and how do we um, how do we run this? So again, it's just contact your CSM SE uh, account team and they'll set up a session to go ahead and run it. Okay, and we have one other person with a blurry screen. Okay. All right, that's uh, we're a little bit past the bottom of the hour. Looks like there's no more questions coming in. All right, I guess that's it. All right, thank you very much for showing up. Uh, hope this works out well for you. Uh, we encourage you to go to TechCrunch and look at the past webinars and, and provide feedback. And uh, at this point, we'll, we'll sign off. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Bye.